close to the speed of light is a kind of elixir of life. Because time slows down close to the speed of light, special relativity provides us with a means of going to the stars. Welcome back to Llamascapes, everybody. It is day 71 of the Speedrun account, and we have hit our first little roadblock in archaeology, the first little speed bump we gotta get over, which is the 86 to 89 grind. It is like 1.2 million EXP where you're just stuck to the same spot. Like, you don't get any more unlocks at 87, 88. Uh, it's just the 86 spot all the way through. The plan for me is to do the Green Gabo Goodies 1 uh, collection over and over again to get some Tetra Compasses, but I remembered that I have a lamp sitting here from uh, Wild Gothic's... No, 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 The World Wakes. Uh, so, yeah, 100k archaeology in the bag. And we're getting another Beastmaster in. That is some decent loot. 1337 techie, indeed. Bayonite Stone Spirits are quite nice as well, and that's some pretty decent Alps there. And the really nice thing here is that means I'm unlocking my third ability. So there is Onslaught available. Uh, still need Storm Shards and Shatter and still need the Mazgab Teleport, but those things aren't nearly as important as these first three. And this time we are getting a back-to-back in. -back Let's see if the luck continues. It does not, but that is okay. Rocktails, Sharks, even more Alex. Very good. Also, the Log Drop is quite nice. Well, here we are on day 73 now. Picked up... 90 farming yet another skill up to level 90 which is super nice spent all day on day 72 just doing archaeology and that's the plan for all of today as well and here we are finally making some more progress i feel like it's been a long time since i've made a clip there's level 89 archaeology finally we unlocked new spots which is nice uh, i can go finish some more collections uh yeah so that is six more Full sets done of the GGG1 set so I can make some more Tetra Compasses. All right, time for five more rolls at the 1 in 10,000. I know, it's never going to happen, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. It seems like these binding contracts are really common, so like that's, that's definitely nice. Uh, okay, we'll take the tomes, bank the rest, pop another, take the tome. Some pages, uh, those are useful, I believe. Uh, still don't have the other thing that we need, the other thing that we're looking for, uh, but that's okay. The other uh, golem item. There's a tome, yeah, bunch of junk. Uh, some more onyx dust, which is nice. That's actually pretty close to uh, two onyxes, I think, both uh, in my bank. Uh, 25 free inventory spaces, oh no. All right, I cleaned my inventory, let's see. Uh, that is a ton of salvage. Okay, can I bank all of that? Cool. Pop the last one. Got some paintings. Got two more tomes. It's a fair number of bolt tips. Uh, but yeah, still not seeing the uh, the big drop that we're looking for. But that's okay. We're getting some material manuals, uh, which will be useful later. Getting a bunch of random uh, materials as well, which are also nice. The really valuable thing, though, is that I grinded all the way up to level 80, you know, 86 to 89, and got most of level 89 just off of those tomes. Finally, closing in on what I've been working towards all day today, uh, but with this next restoration, which this process takes forever, <laughs> I could really speed it up, uh, there is level 90 picked up. So yeah, I can get the uh, the next qualification sorted out as soon as I uh, turn some of these artifacts in. Yeah, just, just more progress, five more levels to go. All right, well, there's the professor qualification earned and uh, it broadcasted actually as I turned in uh, one of my sets and not doing this, which is kind of strange, uh, but time to go buy some upgrades. All right, so we have saved up a fair number of chronotes, which will allow us to buy the precision upgrade right away and the storage upgrade. And we're still sitting on 30K, which is nice to be, uh, yeah, sending out some uh, some nerds. So that's a nice stack to have. And just like that, we're on to day 74. 
And I am very happy to say that just a few minutes before this roar buff goes away, that is the archaeology potion done. Uh, yeah, we can restore the potion recipe and read that. There we go. Now we're all prepped. We just got to get to level 95. We can boost for the dunk relic. And because that Varanosaur remain spot is so, uh, so basic, I guess it only gives two items and they're both fairly straightforward, uh, materials, um, like the three materials that the Varanosaur remains gives are exactly what you need to repair both of these or uh, restore both of these things. Um, I'm just going to restore these evenly. Um, I've already made them for both of the collections that need these. So those like completion spots are filled out. Uh, but I will be restoring more of these for some XP. And I think I'm just going to disassemble them for components so that once we get into Ancient Invention, we can actually do something with it. And just like that, doing all these restorations, we picked up level 91 Archaeology. So now we get another spot that we can, uh, you know, go get things at. I uh, I didn't notice that whenever I completed that Tetra Compass uh, yesterday... I actually completed the Zamorak book with, with one page of each type. So that's, <laughs> that's something, right? Um, I'm pretty sure that's just straight up better than the damaged book for going in that slot. So uh, yeah, that's an upgrade. So yeah, let's buy a damaged Zamorak book and throw all of the pages into it and get the, uh, yeah, upgraded book. Oh, I need to make that illuminated, right? So let me see how to do that. And there we have it, Illuminated Book of Chaos that gave some uh, prayer and crafting XP, and that is just a very good upgrade, right? You get the strength and the prayer bonus just for having it in that slot. And those Tetras helped us put together a full Crystal Triskelion, so we're going to throw it in and see if we can hit a Dragon Pickaxe. Yeah, that's, that's nowhere close to a Dragon Pickaxe. And after a long hard day of even more archaeology we're finally level 94 just one level to go it's all going to be at this one spot and fortunately this spot also gives tetra compass uh pieces sort of you know it gives pieces that artifacts that go into tetra compass pieces through the collection anyway i'm looking forward to doing some more of those and here we are opening three more ancient caskets because it is finally that time yeah, we are finally approaching that level 95 archaeology that we have been waiting for. So, popping these open, getting... I mean, the Onyx Dust is, is nice out of all of these. Uh, but, finally, being able to read these tomes and getting this level is huge. Uh, just, just have a little more archaeology to do. Have a cache that I'm going to have to run into. Uh, but after all that, we have reached our goal. All right, here we are at the table. I can either make two random blueprints or I can make, oh, uh, no, I can actually just make, yeah, only one uh, random blueprint or one specific one. So I'm going to go with one specific one, 300 fragments for, uh, yeah, we're going with ancient gizmos for sure. There we go. Pick that up. That's done. Ancient invention unlocked as soon as I you know, boost my invention to actually read that. Uh, and then I have some archaeology potions here, which I can use to go get the, uh, the pieces I need for the relic I want. And there's the hard part done. Golem framework made. So we just got to wait till the next cache rolls around and then offer the relic. And then we just activate it and leave it there forever, right? And here we have two shots at scavenging for... Let's see if we can hit it. I think there's very... Very low chance, but uh, nope, and no, unfortunate. And there we have it, the beautiful Unlock Divine Conversion Relic. When converting memories at a riff, you hit it with the slam dunk and convert the entire backpack in one go. So we're going to be throwing this on instead of Unexpected Diplomacy because we don't, we don't really need the extra, you know, the extra rep anymore. Uh, so Divine Conversion, Harness, Toss Out the Diplomacy, there we go. Beautiful. Just made some adamant minotaur pouches, picked up 81 summoning, so I can make some nightmare muzbas. That is a huge unlock right there, and then I can swap all the rest of these for some shards back. Uh, having these is going to be quite nice, and wow, well, I ended up saving six charms, probably because of my spirit ruby, sadly, but my headdress could help too. Um, 
these are going to be really useful. They last 64 minutes now, which is nuts. That's 15 of them. So that's more than 15 hours of divination. I don't even know if I'm going to need to do 15 hours of divination going the rest of the way to max cape. So yeah, those, those are done. Also, I did my familiarization and picked up a triple charm drop ticket. I'm going to use that over at uh, Exiled Calphites uh, once I get one more unlock sorted out. All right, I think this is my fourth Ancient Armor Gizmo, but we managed to hit it. Scavenging four plus the bonus of looting, which is quite nice. There we go. Now we're almost ready to camp buyers. And here we have it. Gizmo Dissolver on the gown. Take off the scavenging two, boom, and add on the scavenging four. Let me make sure I have the right one. So that is a scavenging three looting. There's the scavenging four right there. Boom. That is beautiful. And this here is a nice upgrade that I've been saving up for. Another upgrade to the Vire setup, Cetaside Collector upgrade, which means that you have the ability to basically toggle on your Cetaside uh, whether certain things will just go straight to your inventory uh, or whether they'll be, you know, destroyed. <laughs> um, yeah, so auto pick up unselected seeds and then I actually go through and select all the seeds that I'd like to be destroyed for farming XP. Uh, this is something I'd like to add to my tool belt, but I'm currently lacking a little bit on the Slayer Point department. And here we are, exiled Calphites, just in case y'all didn't know exactly what I was referring to. Yeah, these guys right here, we are just about three minutes into this, and we are up to 13, okay, uh, 16, I guess, blue charms. Oh, there's, there, yeah, there's even more now. Um, yeah, they they really stack up quite, uh, quite quickly, so... Yeah, we're going we're going to sit here for a solid 40 minutes, uh, rack up some herbs, some herb seeds, some alks for GP and some uh, some good charms. And 45 minutes later, there we have it, the full grind at Calphites done. Picked up a fair number of herb seeds, uh, which is quite nice and also a ton of stuff in the herb bag. Um, you know, really valuably, like 40 Quorms, 22 Ranars is quite nice. A decent bit of Alks, I don't actually know what the total is, but a decent bit of uh, components from Scavenging. Uh, 232 Crimsons, 244 Blue Charms, and then about 210 between uh, Golds and Greens. Pretty solid haul for 40 minutes there. Also, uh, and the reason I stayed an extra 5 minutes, as I mentioned, I stayed for, uh, you know, about 45 minutes, not just 40 well, that is because my gear uh, just hit the siphoning and disassembling level. So siphon this one, bam, siphon this one, bam, and then disassemble the sun spear. And that should give me, yeah, 83 invention. That's a nice, uh, nice two levels. So all of that together, I still don't quite have enough blue and crimson charms to carry me all the way to level 87. However, uh, you know... First and foremost, I can use penguin points uh, if I really wanted to. And secondly, uh, you know, weekly reset is coming up. So what I could do is just go ahead and prepare all of my tertiaries uh, for the charms that I'll need to use. And then as soon as I have the charm sorted out, I just burn through the levels. So uh, we'll see where I end up. But, uh, you know, regardless, we are pushing hard for that 87 goal. I, uh, I don't even know what to say about this. <laughs> It's it's all to find box traps. Well, what kind of madman? I've been doing a bit more thinking about this summoning goal, and the main way that I plan on getting these levels, of course, is using blue charms, uh, which means adamant minotaurs and rune minotaurs. Uh, after you know, I get eighty six just for the little eighty six to eighty seven. But even then. You know, after that point, I'm still going to want uh, rune minotaurs for quite a while, I imagine. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of thinking, and one nice thing to unlock would be perfect juju mining potions. Uh, essentially, it's just 10% chance to mine an extra ore for free. Uh, really, it gives you a stone spirit upon mining an ore, which means you could, you know, uh, the next ore that you mine gets doubled. Um, yeah, they, they last you know, an hour per dose, uh, fairly easy to pick up. The only issue is I basically need, uh, 90 Hunter in order to get those. Uh, it's either 90 Hunter or, you know, my Hunter requirement is fine and I have to go through Herblore Habitat, but I'm not going to bother with that. 
I'm just going to go for level 90. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm just going to work on, uh, you know, 90 Hunter is my last big grind before being able to do fires. And there's the medium to Ranwin Diaries done. Yeah, that is so that I can uh, hunt Grinwalls without having to bait the traps. So time to get on that. Spent a fair amount of time working on Hunter, got up to level 84, and I'm just going to wait for the next roar of Osseus to roll around, and I'll mostly finish out 86 then. And at that point, I can use, like, Banner Boost, plus two up to 88, catch some charming mods for some, uh, you know, some charms, really good Hunter XP, and some agility. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, made up some Hunter Urns, which are quite handy, uh, and also I'm up to 10,000 Grinwall Spikes. I think... Ideally, I'd catch like, you know, 20, 25,000 at least, um, because that should carry me through to 99 Herblore. Uh, then I can always go back and catch more Grand Walls if I really have to. So that's that's really just the plan for now. Uh, you know, go to Anachronia, catch some Grand Walls uh, when the time is right. Also, I've been using Electrified Traps, which are quite handy. Uh, yeah, so on Roar, I'm going to go there and do that for the time being, kind of in between going to work on uh, stacking up some urns. So I'm up to 875 soft clay banks, thanks to Ithil Hours. Um, also, just feel like working on harps for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, stocking up on some urns, doing some maintenance things that I need before getting into some of these longer grinds. Went and did my weekly penguins and the backup with the uh, reset token. And we got eight easy caskets to open, so let's just go ahead and pop them. Wow. Okay. Uh... Yep, just uh, just just following a trend here. Um, I think I'm just going to keep it for the pure essence, to be honest. And yeah, lighthouse teleports are crazy valuable, which is just insane to me. A reroll token, easy. Can't pass that up. Uh, this right here, total trash. Um, okay, fortunate. I'll take it. Uh, nothing here. We'll reroll again with another fortunate. And then I think I'm actually going to use up that, uh, that reroll token they gave me. Let's see what it offers. So redeem that, open this, nothing, reroll. Yeah, nothing. On to day 78, working on some more Hunter, and I feel like I am incredibly lucky right now because this is three double encounters in a row at Asia Tops. Um, that's, just, that's just a bunch of XP all at once. That's quite nice. Okay, so a bit of testing has shown that Charming Mods are not as good as I thought they would be. Uh, not really worth doing on Banner Boost. I mean, the Agility XP is, is kind of nice, but um, yeah, the, the catch rate is just so low that it's it's not quite as good as it should be. Uh, so I think I will just stick to BGH on, uh, you know, Roar Hours. Doing some more BGH and... Uh, yeah, I got an Asia top, so that's nice. Um, nice little 1 in 50. I think I haven't done too many of these hunts, uh, but I seem to be getting really lucky on the doubles for these, like, tier 2 dinos, so that's quite nice. And on the next hunt, there is the level 88 that we have been going for that gives us access to the first thing, uh, well, Charming Moths, uh, but also the first... Jadinko that we want to hunt, which is the diseased Jadinko. Uh, that gives us access to... I believe it's the uh, Juju Hunter Potion. Yeah. Uh, and then those Juju Hunter Potions I'll be using at level 90 to catch. Uh, where are they at? Some Draconic Jadinkos outside of uh, Herblore Habitat here on Anachronia. So just two more levels to go. And this is one big reason that I've continued BGH even off of the roar. And that's because I want to get access to the Elite Trapper outfit. I also just don't have a lot of other things to work on for the time being. So there we go. That outfit is now unlocked, and I can make uh, four or five pieces of it. Uh, I probably won't have a set for a while, but it's a start. Oh, and thanks to today's traveling merchant, I picked up the third piece of the Fletcher's outfit. So just two more pieces to go there, uh, and I ended up making three legs before even making, like, a chest. So that's... okay. Interesting. So I've done a little bit of testing with the good old Arctic Bear Pouch out, now that I'm actually level 88 Hunter. Uh, again, don't have any of the Trapper set effects yet, um, so those will be a very big boost in the future. Um, and currently I'm getting about like 280,000 Hunter an hour with about 40,000 Agility. Um, so combined, those are pretty good. 
but comparing to like tier two and tier three in the future dinos and bgh uh it's it's not quite comparable uh because bgh ends up being a lot faster with just hunter uh, also the slayer has some value there um and the drops have a fair bit of value as well uh so for the time being since i am just trying to push my hunter level i'm gonna be doing this in between roars um i probably be 90 tomorrow so it's not a big deal uh but yeah, I'd, I'd like to come back here. Maybe if I run out of tier two and tier three meets in the future, I will come back here. Um, but for the time being, I'm just going to kind of focus on roars for my hunter and make it a daily thing. Uh, I also want to be doing a lot of uh, agility on roars. So it's kind of a, a battle between these two skills, but we'll get there. On to day 79, and I'm feeling a bit silly for putting all that effort into getting, you know, 89 and actually pushing towards 90 hunter when I... Could have just banner boosted so <laughs> that's what i'm doing now uh i'm gonna stock up on a fair number of these vines just because i know they'll be useful uh i'm gonna want to use uh, either perfect juju mining potions or uh, perfect plus potions for all of the rest of my mining uh just because it's 10 percent free ore um so yeah i'm gonna stock up on a fair number for the time being Though it is kind of silly that each of these vines is technically worth three, some of sometimes four hours of mining. Um, not going to need a ton. Maybe I'll just go for like 50. I do think it's worth mentioning too that uh, between, you know, yesterday and today, I haven't been playing quite as much. Uh, I've been doing some stuff IRL. A uh, few things have come up. So... Yeah, my playtime has been a little low, and that's why the progress has felt a little slow. Same with some of those archaeology days. I just I had to take a mental break on some of those days and just do something else for an hour or two here or there because I got tired of the tick, 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 tick. For some reason, the wiki says the max XP I should gain for handing these Ingrams in is 17,192 at level 99. But if I hand this in... I get a 63,000 XP drop. Now, I remember this being this good. I don't know why the wiki is this wrong. Maybe that's for future prestiges or something, but there's 94 div, and I'm pretty much going to get 95 uh, just by doing the rest of these Ingrams. And since the next thing I'm working on is going to be mining, I thought it was a good idea to turn some of these uh, binding contracts that I got from my Tetra Compasses straight into gargoyle pouches. Um, I'm pretty sure all you do, yeah, you just kill the mob and it turns one in. They last 64 minutes, uh, which is quite a long time for one pouch, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, I'll just make up a good, uh, probably just an inventory worth of these and, uh, we'll go from there. And there's yet another skill up to level 90, 90 mining picked up and... Nope, this one, this one is not a ports adventurer, it's, as it turns out. So uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble, you know, doing all of the, um, doing all of the uh, crystal uh, mining and and the uh, the gym rocks and stuff like that, or the sorry, the crystal flasks, the potion flasks. All of those add up to a ton of mining XP, but they don't provide smithing XP. Um, so I went and did my effigy incubator for the month. Hopefully that's going to help out a little bit, um, but I think I'm going to mine up at least one more Bane Burial set from here, and then I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. So, um, anyway, yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see y'all in the next one where I'm planning to get my first 99.